Hey guys, my name is Doug with infotainment.com. Today we're working on the new body Ram truck, specifically the heavy duty today. Today I'm gonna to show you guys an awesome upgrade we carry here. This is the LED bed lighting kit. Now this is 100% factory Mopar. We're gonna show you today how to install it 100% plug and play. You could do it in the comfort of your own garage. So you're gonna have a, a LED light on the left side and LED light on the right side and then wiring underneath the truck, you're gonna wire it into the cab where your BCM is up under your um, steering column. Very easy to do, we're gonna show you step by step. At the very end, you're gonna to wanna to program that BCM um, with the correct coding to enable the feature. Um, it's just an awesome upgrade, it's easy to do. Uh, it gives you a lot of visibility at night, obviously. Those of you who have a tonneau cover or a shell, a cap, um, it really just gives you a lot of light in there. Whenever you unlock your doors, it immediately turns it on. When you open your tailgate, it'll come on. Or if you wanna manually turn it on, it also comes with a little switch that installs right here. Before we go ahead and install this, we're actually gonna drop in um, a Mopar, factory Mopar bed liner. We have another video that shows you how to do that if you're interested. Um, but after that, we're gonna go ahead and get started with um, installing our kit. They are um, front and back. It's got the three LEDs that project to the front of the vehicle. So when you're doing your cargo, and this just illuminates tailgate. As you tighten it up, tighten up the seven millimeter, it pulls in the black or the square plate here, a block, and it flares these out, almost like a, a drywall screw would do for hanging a pitcher. That's all that those do. And then once they're in there, they're locked in. You can remove the screw to take you, you know, if you ever need to change the light. LEDs you don't. Just repeat on the passenger side. Nice and snug. Plate. This piece is, this keyhole mapped up. It's got a little notch in there. It's got a little keyhole uh, notch here. That way you got, you know, your top and bottom. Slide it in from bottom up, snaps in. They have everything pre, all the pre plugs. We don't put just a, a zip tie on this one, just so it's held out of the way, it's not dangling. Be careful when you cut those; those things get really sharp, and they will slice you up. You may have to 
route over the tire. Just coming up over the frame, following this, the main body harness here that runs to the rear. Clip it. To there. And then uh, should have the two plugs here. There we go. Pull a little bit of slack out. A zip tie. Tie it in. Sure you cut them off, just so that you don't get a rattle, wind blowing it, smacking the bottom of the truck. Seems odd, but it will. Just zip tie your extra slack up. Over there now. So I can use it as a little pull snake. You can use a um, refrigerator line too. You can pick up like a 50 foot roll for 10 bucks and cut as long as you want and use it for snakes. I run over the top of the wheel well. I run this. Just route it. I'm trying to do it so it's it's not going to get in a bind or pinched. There's a, the factory harness runs down the top of the frame here. Or top slash kind of back side. So we're going to run that like that. Try to run it so in case they ever do a body lift or they kind of, they got to go back tear everything apart on it, cut your wires. So we'll leave a little bit of slack so if they need to move it around in a later, in kind of later installs. I always try to think ahead for other people as well. Nobody likes to work backwards. Basically just following a body harness up to the front. Uh, control body or body control module. So we gotta make a connection up there. Don't wear the water there. All right, I use a skew. Buy these at Lowe's Home Depot. Just make sure it's metal geared, not the plastic cheap ones. Sometimes they do break, so be cautious. AutoZone sells them. And a little screw and a screw all with all the little accessory screws. Now we're just working this fender out in the well. Mopar wants you to do that, but he technically just ran it up secured it at the lower point and secured it at the top point. If you would have just ran it up, as you can see straight up through there, you could have just, it secured at the bottom and then come up here and just secured it. You'd pretty much been in the same point as it was. Just do it as they would like. the battery and the back fuse box. I'm gonna secure one more zip tie.
So we're going to um, remove the factory 10 millimeter bolt. Go ahead and ground the system before we start tying into the electrical. Black ground. I twist them to make sure they're nice and clean. I like my ground terminal going down. That way it's not catching on anything. If a detailer's watching, washing your car or anything and it don't break that ground off. This is the rubber boot for it right there. And in the directions, it's telling you to cut that little nipple off. That's a pass-through nipple. If you cut the end of it, it's an open hole. That's where it's saying to run the dark green and white wire. pass through. This is going to go through the firewall. I'll pull the lower dash off just to see what we got going on. We're going to the bottom blue plug on the LBT, I mean, on the um, body control module up here. All right, guys, Robbie went ahead and routed all the wiring into the cab of the truck. Now what I wanna do, instead of putting a camera down up under there and showing you guys what's going on, I'm actually, I actually bought a separate BCM and separate wiring that I can put on a bench to show you guys a little bit easier on which wires to connect to. The BCM you're going to connect to though is located right up in here and it is a little tight in there so get your hands in, unplug the connectors, I'll show you how to do it on this one. Uh, unplug the connectors and tap into the appropriate wires. Okay guys, so here's the wiring we have. This is a, a sample um, harness here. I'm just gonna show you guys, it'll be a little bit easier here on the bench. So these are the wire you, you have. This one here, even though the instructions say to connect it, we're gonna go ahead and tie this one back. This one we are not going to use for the heavy duty. It, you know, we, we went ahead and hooked it up and it didn't make a difference, so uh, we're gonna go ahead and disregard that. So that leaves us with three wires. You have your ground, which Robbie attached to the fender, the little lug, uh, the little nut right there on the fender. And then we have two wires remaining. Now, these have terminals on them, so they can be easily pressed into the connector. As long as the spot is vacant, this will slide right into the connector. Um, so let's go ahead and unplug them and see what we have. So the lower connector here, this is the blue connector at the bottom, it's hard to see, but there's a letter G and a letter F for this connector, letter E. So the first one we're gonna do right here is the letter G, the C456, uh, C7, letter G connector. Press this little tab in right here and slide the gray lever all the way to the top until you hear it click. And then pull this connector out. Now on the side of the connector, there's this little tab here what you're gonna to wanna to do is just press the tab out and push the shell to release it. So on this particular uh, connector, we're looking for pin 16. So in the corners, it'll say 13, 24, 12, and one. We're looking for pin 16. So we got 13, 14, 15, this is 16 right here. Now, in this particular case, this is already, already populated, okay? So if it's not populated, you're gonna take the green wire with the white stripe and you're simply just going to insert it into that cavity and that's all you have to do. If it is populated like this, then you have a couple options. You can either solder into this wire here 
If you're more of an advanced installer, you can use a T-tap. What we like to use here at Infotainment are the Posi tabs. Um, really clean, nice install, super easy. Um, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna connect a Posi tap into this wire, and I'll show you how to do that now. What we're gonna do is we're gonna cut off this terminal. Then we're gonna strip it about a quarter inch. Then we're gonna get our posi tap. There's two sides to the posi tap. There's one side that unscrews and has a soft metal side. This will be the wire side that you're trying to connect. The other side, which is the gray, this has the spade side, so it's got a, a point. So what we're gonna wanna do is put the gray on the wire you wanna connect to. And then the area that has a point, you're simply just gonna screw it into this. Now what that's gonna do is that's gonna pierce the wire and tap into the strands, whether it's solid or stranded, the wire. So once this is really nice and tight, what we're gonna do is we're gonna take the wire we wanna connect to it, we're gonna put the red side in like this. You're going to take your wire and just touch it against the, the, um, the metal inside there. And then we're going to tighten this connector. Once the gray is tight and the bottom is tight, give it a nice little tug. We are now easily connected to that wire using a posi tab. So now we can put our shell back on and then we can connect it, make sure the lever is all the way down. We can connect it back to our BCM. Once it's in, then pop the gray connector back and clip it into place. We're gonna do that exact same procedure on this connector here for this wire. All right, now we're gonna connect this beige wire with the white strand to pin six on this connector. So we're gonna press the tab, slide the lever all the way forward until it clips, and we're gonna go ahead and remove it. The one we're after here is this black connector. So we're gonna press our tab out. Meanwhile, sliding the connector. So you see on this side we have 11 and 24. On this side we have one and 10. So we're looking for pin six. That's gonna be this wire here. So you got one, two, three, four, five, six. So it's gonna be this wire right here. We're gonna do the exact same procedure to this wire. Now, as I mentioned with the other one, if this, if this was vacant, we already have the proper terminal on it where we can just slide it right in and it locks into place. But since, it's, since it already has a wire there, we're gonna go ahead and cut off our terminal and put in a posi tab. All right, guys, we have both of our wires connected. Everything's nice and tight. Uh, both connectors are clipped in. So now we're done with the wiring procedure. Now all we have to do is install our security gateway module bypass and run our OBD Genie programmer. So let's do that now. All right, guys, I'm gonna show you how to run the OBD Genie programmer in the 2019 and up heavy duty Ram truck. Now, in order to run the Genie programmer to enable the option that you're looking for, you also have to install temporarily 
a security gateway module bypass. Now this is just installs temporarily just to allow you to program the vehicle's body control module for the specific feature you're looking to enable. Now, the security gateway module is located behind the speedometer, so I'm gonna show you guys how to get to that. It's not as hard as it sounds. Um, the whole process, including the programming and, and reassembling, takes about 15 to 20 minutes. So let's get started. You notice it gives you a little bit of room here. All we have to do now is pull on this little panel here, just enough to loosen it up a little bit. Now what we're gonna do is pull out the uh, speedometer bezel here. So what you're gonna wanna do is on the lip of the bezel here, to put your pry tool in or a regular screwdriver, you're just gonna wanna pry down on it to release the clips. Then just pull it out. You notice it just has retaining clips. There's no screws that hold that bezel in. So, um, on, the, on the right side of your speedometer, you're gonna have the, the little part that you popped out earlier. You don't have to disconnect this, just kind of set it off to the side. Same thing on the other side, just pop that off. Set it, set it off. Now you're gonna notice two seven millimeter screws on this instrument uh, or this um, steering column panel. So you're gonna go ahead and, and remove those two screws. I'd like to go ahead and put the column down a little bit, but basically you just pop this out. And then you'll notice two lower screws on the actual speedometer itself, and then two screws at the top. So go ahead and remove those four. All right, now that all of our screws are out, we can simply just pull the cluster out, flip it upside down, and just temporarily disconnect it. Behind the speedometer cluster is where the security gateway module is located. All right, so what we're gonna do is we're just gonna disconnect those two connectors that are in the side of that module These two connectors here will simply just plug into our bypass device. We can just set it back here. We can go ahead and install our cluster. We're just gonna set the cluster back in place. We're not gonna actually screw it in. We're just gonna set it back in place. Now at this particular point, now that the security gateway module bypass is installed, now we can run our OBD Genie programmer in the OBD2 port. All we have to do is put the vehicle in the run position um, and then we can go ahead and plug it in. It takes about 30 seconds, you'll see a green light illuminate and then once um, the green light comes on, you know you're all done. All right, what we're gonna do is go ahead and put the vehicle in the run position and we'll go ahead and plug in our Genie programmer. You'll see a series of lights. As soon as you get the solid green light, you can go ahead and unplug it and won't be needed anymore. All right, we now have the solid green light so we can go ahead and disconnect it. You'll also notice that your speedometer cluster and your infotainment system will reset as well. All right, guys, we went ahead and turned the truck off. Um, now all we have to do is just um, remove the um, bypass device, plug those two cables back into the security gateway module, and just reassemble everything. So as you can see, very easy to do. We've been in here for maybe 12 minutes. Um, so what we're gonna do now is just kind of put it all back.
All right, we're gonna go ahead and put this closeout panel in. You'll notice how it kind of has this lip here. You're gonna wanna stick that in and then pop it into place. Um, the other side is the same way where the ignition switch is. All right, now when you install the uh, speedometer bezel, you're gonna wanna clip in the bottom first and then slide the top back and it'll pop back into place. All right, guys, as you can see, the installation process is very easy, not difficult at all. Just follow the video that we prepared for you. But what a great upgrade. Again, easy to install, super convenient, especially those of you who have a tonneau cover or a bed uh, cap on top. Um, just as soon as you unlock the vehicle, maybe you open your tailgate, it'll turn on automatically. You also have the option to turn it on by pressing your cargo lamp switch on your instrument panel or simply by pressing the switch right here. That will activate your lights. Again, great easy feature, another build here at infotainment.com. We are doing over 20 factory options in the 2019 and up Ram Duty. Um, all sorts of features that maybe you forgot to add when you built your truck initially. A lot of great, easy to install, plug and play, factory options from infotainment.com. Come check us out, thanks for watching.